Hi, I'm Kojo, the Christian Tech Guy, and today I'm going to be doing a, a kind of tour of the HTC One and Mate running Sense 6 with the Android 5.0.1 Lollipop. So it's essentially um, a Lollipop tour. I've been running it for almost a month now, I think, and um, uh, I, I thought that would be better than just having it for a day and then putting out my thoughts or doing a tour of it. Uh, running it for a month, I've been able to see all the kind of uh, nuances, uh, get to know it a little bit better. So um, here we go. So I'm going to start off by just showing you uh, the lock screen as I get an email. <laughs> um, so with the lock screen you've now got the notification shade of course um, right uh, kind of there. And you also have access to quick toggles. This is something you didn't have uh, with KitKat, you couldn't, if you wanted to turn off Wi-Fi for example, you would have to unlock the phone first, but now you can just go down into the quick toggles and turn the Wi-Fi off. Um, but to begin with, I'm going to actually break this video down into kind of three sections. The first one's going to be animation changes, as that's the really big thing that uh, Android Lollipop kind of brought. The second thing's going to be specific changes that HTC has brought to Sense 6. And then the third one's going to be the kind of gripes that um, me and my other other people I know who use uh, the HTC One and Mate and have had the update, uh, what kind of negative things they would have to say, and what we would hopefully um, see in Sense Seven, which is going to be launching on Sunday. So that's um, first of all the proof is always in the pudding, and that is showing that this is indeed running Android 5.0.1 with Sense 6. The first kind of animation thing I'm going to show you is when you are going back uh, with Android Lollipop you would have the whole screen kind of go down but with uh, Sense 6 you just get or yeah with the HEC skin you get a subtle screen down so I'll show you now see it just kind of fades away ever so slightly uh, by going down. Um, Right, so with the lock screen, you can now uh, read notifications straight from there. So if you pull down that, for example, you can see it and you can swipe away to dismiss it. You can also hold down and that enables you to go straight into the settings and also enables you, if you click the eye, to block the notifications coming on the home screen. Uh, check the change the priority of it so whether it comes to the top of the list or doesn't and you can also um, decide whether you want to hide it from showing on the home screen so with that that's the uh, notific well that's the animations there you can when you swipe down it all kind of scrolls down with it um, with the notification shade you kind of you get all these kind of little bubbly things in um in in Android Lollipop. Uh, for example, if I hit settings, you'll see it all kind of scroll down and then scroll up to get into the settings. Whatever animations are there. Um, uh, yes, uh, opening the clock, for example, you'll see it kind of launch down, kind of flip down, and opening the weather, you see it kind of come from the right up uh, down into the left and that's also true if it's even at the bottom uh, it still kind of comes from where it was if that makes sense and that just looks weird so put that back at the top and that's um oh another animation thing is if you from the lock screen just swipe to unlock you'll see the bottom the softer touch buttons kind of slowly come into play i'll do that again and of course, uh, when you're opening Google now, it has a different animation to it, kind of with Lollipop, and it splashes into action. So I think that's, oh yeah, you can also still do the two finger swipe down, and of course you can just swipe away, or from the lock screen, if you want to open something, you can just simply double tap it, and it opens up. Um, oh, another animation thing. I'm gonna just get my brother to text me and WhatsApp me, and I'll show you animations there. Go 
course, it'll swim that way. There, give me a moment. Well, actually, I'll, I'll keep um, showing the animations. So, for example, when you open up Blink Feed now, it kind of opens up from the top. I mean, it opens from the bottom. It kind of swipes up. Um, however, w what the new animations or with the notification shade has now brought is, for example, when you're going through Blink Feed, you can't tap to the top to scroll back up to the top anymore. Or you can't do that in the gallery app or other uh, HEC apps as well. So that is one kind of downside, I guess, to having the notification shade as it is. Still waiting from the, for the message from my brother. Well, as as I wait for that, I will then go and through go through the specific changes that have been brought. So um, the multi for multitasking page, for example, now you can have multiple uh, pages. Before it was just limited to the three by three nine apps at a time, but now you can have more than nine apps running at the same time with this grid view. And then you can also change how it looks or oh, sorry you can change how it looks so that it is with how stock android looks for example so that's with the card view and that's where it's stacked up kind of like that and you can scroll through it um, swipe away at something to get away from it or hit the x as well however with this uh, carousel view you can't close everything at once which is why i continue to use the grid view because I can close everything at once if I want and I can also see everything a lot more easier than with the kind of carousel view. So now with when so my rose just texted me, when a text comes through, unlike before it used to you could read it straight from the notification shade and it would kind of scroll and you'd without opening it you'd be able to see it. And that's what happens with a WhatsApp message now. You can if you're playing a game for example you could just swipe it away and it's gone, but you can read it straight up. <laughs> and that's the text from my brother. He can just swipe away, of course. Um, also, with the multitasking page, you can enable pinning. So that means when you hit the pin, you can uh, prevent any... Uh, well, if you give the phone to someone, it will be pinned on that on that app unless they know how to get out of it and you can you can normally set there to be the requirement that they enter the pin in order to get into the app or get back into the home screen and for example you can note the battery stats have also changed so if you go into settings power how it looks has changed but also what it t the information it gives you so it tells you approximately how many hours it estimates will be left uh, if you're charging the phone it will tell you how long it expects it to be charged in however you should take it with a grain of salt because um, there will be different variables in the charging speed so it isn't ultimately always correct here are some screenshots I have from battery usage let me just get to gallery and this is where I, I in my conclusion I would say that the standby battery time has improved vastly um, overnight it stayed at 36% so that was like over eight hours on that occasion on another occasion it stayed at 50% overnight again so even though I would say on average I lose between one to three percent overnight it generally does have a very good standby time of course that's um, being left in extreme power saver mode and this was kind of a normal day um, well an evening uh, well a weekend sorry and it covered almost two days well yeah night that full day and into the next day before I put it into charge another specific change has been uh, the no the top notification bar. I noticed that it got a bit smaller, and um, the font also changed as well, which was a bit interesting. But still works really fine, and it still looks really good. I think.
Um, oh, and the keyboard. You also, uh, I, f I found the keyboard typing experience a lot better, particularly in Chrome. Before I used to, there used to be some kind of bug uh, when typing in Chrome for some reason, but now you can actually uh, just get to the uh, keyboard settings straight from there it just appears in the bottom right hand corner uh, one gripe I have had with this is that I sometimes accidentally launch it and that can be a bit annoying but um, that only happens normally on a really thin case or without a, uh, a case on it so uh, with a case like this for example where the webbing of my, of my hand cannot touch there I haven't um, set it off by accident at all Another change is the introduction of easy mode. So if you go to personalize home screen, uh, it's in default it's HTC Blink Feed, but you can also launch easy mode and it's in the name. It makes it a really simple interface uh, with things to get. The notification shade is also a lot bigger and a lot more simplified, um, but it still kind of runs the same. Uh, you can still get into things uh, multitasking is still the same for example oh, let's get out of this and the text gets bigger as well in easy mode another specific change is that there is the introduction of uh, full screen music wallpapers wallp so let me open this for example and play it and go home for example you get the full um, wallpaper of the screen, or of the music track, sorry. And when you unlock it, you go back to your normal default um, wallpaper. And that's also the case for when you're using, for example, Chromecast or any other kind of uh, media service. It will give you the full uh, wallpaper as your home screen uh, on the lock screen. And another specific change of, uh, to mention is that it also brought in certain Google apps such as Sheets and Slides. Um, how useful they will be to you is, I guess, down to you. But they've been brought in nonetheless um, through the update. And I think that essentially covers everything I have to say, but this is the third uh, part of the video tool. And that's my gripes um, from what I've noticed so far. Um, that would be what will end the things that I expect to see in Sense 7. Um, they would be that there's not that much in the way of animation. Um, of course you do, you do get apps who have embraced the design language, for example, uh, BBC News, when it's red at the top, you get the red bar at the top. Um, that's the same for YouTube. If you go into someone's channel, you will say change the color of the notif notification shade or yeah bar at the top, uh, which we've seen already in uh, Sent6. Um, so that was kind of something Google borrowed from HTC, you could say. Um, but I would like to see a lot more kind of animations uh, in line with material design. Uh, you do get the shadowing kind of effect at the top, uh, at the bottom, sorry, when you open Google now uh, when you open a notification shade that you get a shadow in effects but you don't really get the for example kind of material design uh, animations throughout the software uh, you only get it in bits and places um, I would like the text messages when I receive them to actually pop up just like you saw with when I get a WhatsApp message, that would be uh, something really nice and enable maybe uh, replying instantly or just swiping away instantly when playing a game, for example. Uh, that would be quite cool to see. Uh, not having a brightness slider in the quick settings or notification uh, quick toggles uh, like we see in stock Google. And not having things like the flashlight um, being there as well would be an another useful addition, I think. Um, I think that covers all my kind of gripes. The last one I would say is having the power saver mode 
persistently there is a little bit annoying but um, I guess uh, not much can be do done about that but uh, it would be nice for HTC to enable it to not persistently be in a notification chain if you want to keep the certain power saver modes running in the background. So my conclusion, um, the, the update works fine, unlike certain Lollipop updates I haven't seen much in the way of bugs, um, I've never had the home screen uh, redraw and that's over the, the month that I've said already that I've been running the software. Um, what I have noticed is that very occasionally the wallpaper background turns black when returning to the home screen but um, that's the only kind of bug I think I've seen and it only lasts for like half a second and then my wallpaper returns back. Um, as I've shown you already, the standby time on the battery has been fine and the battery life in general I think has got a little bit better. And um, yeah, as long as in the power saver mode you uncheck the conserve CP uh, usage, it will work really smoothly for you. I've noticed when I have ticked it, there is a little bit of lag and stutter here and there, but as long as you uncheck it, it works fine and as I've said already the battery life uh, is just still really good anyway. So thank you for watching that, I've been Kojo the Christian Tech Guy, if you've liked this please like, share and comment and subscribe to my channel as well to see uh, future videos I'll be making. I'm Kojo the Christian Tech, tech Guy, thank you and God bless.